Hi, everyone. Our group consisted of Jillian Fry, Nick Griffith, Alex Hernandez, myself, Marcus Logine, and then also Carly Brockmeyer. And together we were researching a multi-use space. In this presentation, it's kind of important for us to kind of define what we mean by a multi-use space. And what they typically are are urban development projects that are focused on renovating cultural landmarks for a specific location into something that is a desirable destination spot for both the locals of that community as well as any tourists and visitors that are coming into the community. And what they typically are is a blend of residential, commercial, cultural, or entertainment sort of centers that are combined to make this into a functional space for people to go into. It's a large area. They're typically designed to have people walking through them. And so they also add in some walkways and just clear paths for pedestrians to be walking through. And we have a couple of examples here, one at Box Park in Croydon, England, and then one in, at the Mill Market here there in Denver, and sort of showing a little bit of the differences between them and how they are sort of developed around their specific centers. Multi-use spaces have become popular over the years as a sort of a result in some changes that have come to affect the retail market, namely with technology as well as with consumer preferences. There's been the trend towards businesses moving more towards online and for customers to engage with sales more on an online space. So that's threatened sort of the brick and mortar sort of model. However, the multi-use space has become a popular trend within that retail market for con converting those physical locations as the consumer preferences have shifted towards looking for experiences rather than going to a place to buy or for the retail place to actually be making a sale with the people that come there. And parts of this have come as a result of shifts within the generation, namely with millennials and the Gen Zers, who we're categorizing between the ages of 18 and 40. And they are more looking towards novelty and cultural acceptance as well as multiculturalism and are also very well versed with technology. We did this research on behalf of our client, Smith Gent LLC through the Small Business Institute as part of our marketing strategy course. Smith Gent LLC is a holding company that is owned by the Gent family and it's holding a lease they've had for over 30 years at the rail yard in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Their lease consists of a total of 10,000 square feet with 5,000 square feet dedicated to this warehouse that you can see in the yellow there in the picture. And inside that warehouse is housed a dance studio as well as a rented space towards the front which they are currently leasing towards the landscaping architecture firm who pays them rent. And then there's this open lot here that is paved, but it is open. And that is the other half of about 5,000 square feet. What the company wanted to do was find ways to better utilize that open area. And so our task was to come up with some recommendations and ideas and sort of present some ideas that they could utilize for that space. Through this, we we're looking for synergy with marketing strategy course, this course, and then we also were able to do a collaboration with an undergraduate class that was doing intro to urban design too. Um, also, we're working with MethGen LLC. With Santa Fe and New Mexico, and with our target market within the United States, some stuff that we researched here that we thought pertinent would be to look at the state and the country itself. So the United States has over 327 million people with a median age of about 38, and their median income is about $61,937. The population overall has a tendency to be slightly more progressive, and so there's a greater consciousness towards healthy as well as local food options, a tendency for experience-based options as well as an eco-friendly and eco-conscious mentality. There's a tendency also for women to make more decisions as they tend to have more buying power than men. New Mexico specifically in the state has about 2 million people of that 327 million. Their median age is also on par with what the national median age is of 38. The median income is quite a bit lower at $46,744. It's roughly half and half with females and males, with slightly more females. Then about half the state consists of Hispanic population with 37% being of Anglos and then almost 10% being Native American. As a subset within that, within our particular city of Santa Fe, there is about 84,612 people. Their median age range is a little bit older than most of the state, as well as the national average between 40 and 43, slightly older population there. And their median income is slightly higher than the state by about $10,000, but slightly lower than the national median. And their economy is largely dependent upon tourism and the tourist market. One of the largest employers that's there in Santa Fe is within the retail market. The multi-use spaces tend towards those retail trends and the tourist trends. I'll be talking about research objectives for our study. 
now that we've learned a little bit more about the client, I want to test the Santa Fe market for consumer preferences among the ideas that we're essentially going to propose for this Smith Jam property at the rail yard market based on current trends that we see, different opportunities for capitalizing on community and visitor destination experiences. So the research questions we proposed for our Qualtrics study was, what are consumer motives for utilizing or visiting this multi-use space? Of course, it, it, when you live in an area, as compared to uh, when you're visiting an area, you're gonna look for different things. So really capitalizing on the answers to that question. What kind of specific activities or type of experience are these, are these consumers gonna prefer in these multi-use spaces? We get very specific in kind of the ideas that we're gonna propose. So just, you know, picking and choosing preferences among that. And how do needs or preferences for these like type of spaces, do they differ by ethnicity, age, or locals or visitors, of course. So the research method and sample description for our study was we conducted an internet survey via Qualtrics and our data was collected in two different samples using a convenient sampling method from eligible participants. First of all, everybody had to be at least 18 or older to answer our study and they had to be US residents. For our quota participants for prolifics, we paid them each $1.25 and we had a quota of 150 because we felt that this would be a good sample for a representation of the Santa Fe population. Marcus talked a little bit about the demographic split, so we wanted at least to make sure that 75% would, no, 75 of the 150 would be Hispanics and 75 would be in the general population of people. And we also did a snowball convenience sample where we asked the dance studio participants, which we expect to be active visitants to this future location, and also New Mexicans in general. So this includes our social media followers. All in all, we got 223 survey respondents. We got a few extra from Prolific, so we weren't gonna say no. And what we did when we got these 223 participants is we kind of gave them our 30 ideas that we developed for the space before and after viewing it to kind of create an unbiased view and just have our ideas with thinking outside the box before actually seeing the location. Of course, after seeing the location, seeing what's feasible or not, we kind of started to narrow down to some spaces that what's something that seems possible compared to something that doesn't seem possible or doesn't make sense. For example, brewery, because the market would be too saturated in this area. We asked participants their desires for this multi-use space by checking off a list of different alternatives within our choices. And they ranked their category preferences on a five point Likert scale. One being unenticing, it's not an enticing kind of space you wanna to go to, or five being great deal enticing, as in you really want to go there, you would like that to be at uh, this multi-use space. The Likert scale was designed to measure these preferences and how they want the space on both within your community and also when you're visiting. And so we really just use this information to kind of differentiate among the groups for what purpose are you gonna visit this space for. So some of the examples of our concept ideas, as I said, we grouped them into different conceptual ideas. Food and drinks was one of them that we used. We had different ideas such as an outdoor s'mores cafe, a farmer's market cooking class demonstration, which actually is pictured right above, a tiki bar, a chocolate bar, a distillery, we also had some ideas in the arts and crafts room, such as a mural to take advantage of Santa Fe's art ecosystem, a selfie space, and then a wine and paint studio, which is actually pictured to the right of that. Some more concept ideas. So we had some live entertainment because it is an outdoor space and could really be capitalized on that. So we had like a petting zoo, that was a good example, an oxygen bar. So as you can see in the picture above, an example of what an oxygen, oxygen bar is, a board game library, and then also some utility spaces that are trending within the upcoming generations. So something like an Amazon pickup drop-off center, boutique hotel, and also an aquaponics, hydroponics kind of area, which is pictured right below. So the sample demographics for our survey is we got, like I said, 223 respondents and uh, the gender breakdown was 55% female, 43% male. The ethnicity breakdown was 47% Caucasian, Hispanic Latinos were about 39%, and other was about uh, 13%. We really liked this sample size and really wanted to establish some quotas to help our demographics to be really representative of Santa Fe's population, but also to allow for some diversity to really account for tourism that's going to be coming in and this might be a major part of our customers for this multi-use space. So the Santa Fe population is about 52 53% female, 47% male, so close to our 
respondent demographics, and also ethnicity, 37% Caucasian, 57% Latino, and about 6% other. When we asked the question in our survey, do you think having a multi-use space is beneficial to your community? Key takeaway we got is that over 70% of people, whether it was in New Mexicans, because we broke down the information from the states and the U.S. population as a whole, over 70% of these sample sizes found multi-use spaces to be beneficial, which was, of course, good news. Again, by differentiating New Mexicans in the U.S. population, we really wanted to capture feedback and just some testimony of what would be interesting of having a multi-use space in the community. New Mexicans said things such as to foster community relationship and offer resources, a good way to combat urban decay and repurposing space. We thought that was great for New Mexico. In the United States, we heard comments such as, my city's quite old, we'd like some old landmark to be repurposed for the community, and it would just be a good way to bring locals together and revive old landmarks. So it was mostly good feedback, and we really liked that. New Mexico is on par with the United States to really factor in tourism feedback. All right, now I will be presenting some more of our research question findings. Our first research question was, in general, what are consumers' motives for utilizing or visiting multi-use spaces? Here we have the New Mexicans' responses. The key takeaway here is New Mexicans desire spaces that will provide a unique food and drink experience, and then that's followed up with live entertainment and classes that are in their communities. The U.S. population key takeaway is that they also wanted spaces that provide unique food and drink experiences, again followed by live entertainment. Our second research question, what experiences do consumers prefer in multi-use spaces? Here we wanted to show different categories, so this slide is food and drink. We also broke it into New Mexicans versus the U.S. population, and again we broke it by in your community versus visiting to kind of compare and contrast a local perspective versus somebody who was visiting somewhere as a tourist. The key takeaway here is this is the most popular category and for both groups, New Mexicans and the U.S. population, they both really want to support local farmers and would most likely be eager to attend cooking demonstrations that utilize fresh and local produce. There's also a desire to consume this fresh produce on site. This category here is entertainment. The key takeaway in our second most popular category, we see that while more popular with New Mexicans, both groups favor the nostalgia and social outing associated with a board game library. So this is going to a location and checking out, say, Monopoly for an extended amount of time. They would just pay an hourly rate and the board game library would have a plethora of games that they could check out. While that is popular with the New Mexicans, for the U.S. population, an interactive museum scored really well for in your community. This here is the art category. The key takeaway when it comes to art, they really want to see a mural that has been designed by a local artist. Again, like Alex said, kind of monopolizing on the art-centric perspective of Santa Fe. The next best category was a crafting bar, and that was a very popular choice because respondents want to create arts and crafts projects, so think of ideas like Pinterest, but they might lack the supplies like a sewing machine or a hot glue gun, and that way they can go to the crafting bar, get a template for a craft project and complete the entire project there. Our final category here is utility. The key takeaway, when thinking locally, residents want to check out tools and utilize major machinery that would normally be out of reach for an individual. So say you need some power tools or a saw to complete a home project, you can go and check out that for an extended amount of time and just pay an hourly rate. Another idea is to have a 3D printer in that same space that you can kind of check out for an hourly rate and print some materials, which would be really neat. The next best option, they also wanted to garden and harvest their own food grown in a community aqua or hydroponic system. Finally, we see that a staycation is on the rise and consumers want to stay at a smaller boutique hotel to make their memories more intimate and unique. For our third and final research question, we broke it into three different categories. The first one here is ethnicity. We wanted to see if there were any differences between the two largest ethnicity groups. Specifically for Santa Fe, it's Hispanic and Caucasians. Overall, we didn't find any significant difference by ethnicity. And this just means that all of our proposed ideas were popular among both groups. Here we have the data broken down by three different age cohorts, 19 to 34, 35 to 49, and then the 50 and older age group. 
Again, we did not find any significant difference by age cohorts. The key takeaway here is, again, the proposed ideas were popular across all three of the different age groups. Finally, we wanted to see if it differed by locals versus visitors. These results were also expressed in the above tables for our research question two findings, where we broke it down by in your community and a place you were visiting. Again, we did not really find any difference based off of these two differentials. This just means that it doesn't matter if you're visiting or if you're local, the ideas again were popular amongst both groups. Limitations. We created the survey with our client in mind. We visited their space as well as the greater surrounding area, the Santa Fe Rail Yard. When designing our survey, we didn't want to duplicate any ideas or any already in the rail yard. Some entertainment options like movie theaters are admitted as well as breweries and full service restaurants. Our clients also run a very successful dance studio that rents out yoga space, so we didn't want to look at competitive ideas. Our research serves our purpose very well, but may not be generalizable to a national population, so in that regard, it is limited. Of course, we all know all our servers faced one large history effect, COVID-19. Whether conscious or not, answers may be influenced by the pandemic. I mean, right now, I know we all would like to go forth to a multi-use space and have a drink with our friends, but most of us are going to be a little bit crowd-weary for a while. And some final conclusions. People want multi-use spaces. 77% of respondents are interested in seeing one in their community. People want to experience stuff in their spaces. They want to try new foods, see entertainment, and visit interactive museums. Local and visitors mostly appreciate the same things when it comes to the genre of the concept, but within categories, there's different desires. When people travel, they're more likely to try new things and things that are specific to the area that they're visiting, and they want to indulge a little bit. Within our community, we want spaces to gather and connect with one another. And as far as food goes, we say we want healthy local options, but you know, we like to indulge too. Next, age and race do not influence people's preferences. These factors don't need to be included in our client's decision-making process. Overall, our client has a lot of viable options to choose from, but right now they're a little bit scared about the pandemic, so they want a pandemic-proof concept. An essential service like food may be the best option. Multi-use spaces are the future of urban development, so further research should be done to address a more broad audience that can be applicable to other large metropolitan areas. Brick and mortar retail is dying, but may be adapted in the context of a multi-use space. Retail specific research is needed. The current trend in retail is the concept of pop-up shops, which work well in mixed use spaces as they draw in walking customers and have a more modular design. And lastly, what will multi-use spaces look like in a post-COVID-19 world? As mentioned before, how we interact with the world is changing right now. In our research, we included utility categories and many weren't popular as standalone concepts, but may work well in addition to other concepts. Limiting the number of one trips one takes is already a component of many multi-use spaces, but could be enhanced by pairing more utility concepts with other concept categories and seeing how well they synergize together. Thank you for watching us today and I'd like to open the floor to any questions.